Hello, good morning. Welcome to Touchpoint with Pastor John Nader. We're glad to welcome you this morning to our weekly update and share with you a few things that are going on in the life of our church and to point you in the direction of where we're heading this Sunday morning. And actually, this Sunday is a, is a very unique Sunday in that our youth and our children will be leading our Sunday morning service this week. And so we are looking forward to their, the youth are going to be doing a skit this week uh, in lieu of the sermon. And they have been working on this skit for a while. Uh, the skit is about breaking chains. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, also, our youth this weekend, our youth will be going to the Disciple Now weekend. And uh, that is over at Northside Baptist Church. They will be joining with youth groups from all over Parker County. And um, they will be receiving uh, religious instruction and um, having worship services. Uh, they will have um, a mission time. And it will be a good opportunity for them to, it's almost uh, it's a youth revival, is uh, how I would, I would say it is, like a youth revival. And so this weekend, um, when they are doing their meetings and having their time together, uh, we're going to hit Facebook with some prayer requests. Uh, you know, pray for our youth at this time. Uh, and so when you see those pop up on on the Facebook, then you know that this is an important time this weekend for our youth, and we need to be in prayer for them. Most especially, I ask that you pray for them in terms of uh, their open, opening their hearts, opening their minds, uh, opening themselves up to receive what God has to give to them, that they're open and in tune with the, the working of the Holy Spirit. Um, that through God, God can use the music, God can use the sermons, God can use the fellowship time in the community and the accountability of their friends or, um, or the youth workers to bring them into a, a place of transformation, a place of change, a place of, of, um, of making a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And so... We want to be in prayer for our youth this weekend. Also, be in prayer for our youth leader, uh, Casey Camp, as she is journeying with the youth through this. Prayers for the youth leaders who will be working with the youth groups from all over the county. Not just our youth leader, um, but other youth leaders as well. It is important that we keep this in mind for this uh, revival weekend, this youth revival weekend, because these youth workers are going to be uh, put in situations where they're going to need to be praying with children, uh, these youth, and they're going to be uh, needing to explain faith in, in ways that encourage our youth's open-mindedness, uh, and also um, our youth workers who are going to be involved in this Disciple Now weekend are going to be exhausted and so we're going to pray for them and their strength uh, and uh, that they have the energy and, and that the Holy Spirit equips them to answer tough questions uh, and to be there for them during, during this week, to be there for the youth. Uh, so like I said, um, if you're on Facebook this weekend, we're going to have several posts that go out. Uh, that we're going to be praying for our youth at particular times during the Disciple Now weekend. Uh, and so uh, we'll let you know when those religious instruction times are, uh, when those worship services are, uh, when, what they're doing, when they're doing. And, and, you know, if you just want to be in prayer for them all weekend, that's good too. Uh, you don't have to just pray at specific times. You can be in prayer for them throughout the weekend. Um, so, yes, Disciple Now weekend is this weekend, and, and we are looking forward to what God is going to do in the lives of these youth. Um, 
I can't wait to hear the stories. I can't wait to, uh, to, to hear the experiences that, the, that these youth are having. It, it will be a fantastic opportunity. As we come into the Word of God this week, um, like I said, our youth are going to be leading our worship service on Sunday, and our children will be singing as well. Uh, there's a few songs that they have lined up to sing. Our scripture reading for this week, um, if you're following the lectionary texts, which this Sunday um, is, the, is the last, well, the second to last Sunday before Lent. Um, next Sunday, the 27th, is Transfiguration Sunday. And so last week we talked about uh, the Beatitudes that come from the Gospel of Luke. And this is the next section uh, from the Gospel of Luke. And it begins in chapter 6 and uh, starts on verse 27. And so I'm going to read this, this section of Scripture for us today. Let us listen to God's Word together. But I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, why should you be commended? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, why should you be commended? Even sinners do that. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, why should you be commended? Even sinners lead sinners expecting to be paid back in full. Instead, love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. If you do, you will have a great reward. You will be acting the way children of the Most High act, for he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked people. Be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing, will fall into your lap. The portion you give will be determined, will determine the portion you will receive in return. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. As I was looking for some instruction on this Bible passage this week, um, there are many, many different ways that we could go uh, with instruction on this passage. Uh, when I was in seminary, um, I received instruction from a theologian uh, called Walter Wink, um, and he talked about passive resistance in terms of um, verses 27 through 31. However, you can read up on your, on your Walter Wink if you want to. Uh, I want to share um, some, something that touched my heart uh, this week as I was looking for uh, some instruction on this passage. And it comes from a Sunday school curriculum uh, that we have been using uh, called Life Changers. And so I want to, if you're going to be in Sunday school this Sunday, it's okay. Spoiler alert. It's all right. Uh, but I want to read a little bit about um, putting the word judgment in context. As, as Jesus says uh, in this passage in verse 37, don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. And so um, this Sunday school curriculum talks about putting into context that word um, about judging. And so I want to read this to you this morning. And this comes from the Life Changers Sunday School Curriculum Series. It is crucial to read individual commands in light of the whole passage. 
the entire book and the rest of the scripture. The command, do not judge, in Luke 6, 37, is a good example of this. Elsewhere, Jesus commands us to discern right from wrong in ourselves and others. Matthew 7, 15 through 20, through 20 Luke 6, 43 through 45, Luke 7, verse 43, and Luke 12, 57. Uh, also compare Acts 4, 19. And then all of these examples, what the author is saying here, Jesus commands us to discern right from wrong in ourselves and others. So there's a difference in, in discernment and judgment. Therefore, we must understand the word judge in light of Luke 27 through 36. Here, to judge is to pass judgment on someone to declare what he justly deserves and furthermore to wish heartily that he will get what is coming to him that he's going to get what he deserves that the person if the person is um, is an angry person that he should get anger uh, if the person is has been uh, has wronged others then he should be wronged if the person is is a thief then he should have things stolen from him that's exactly what this judgment is referring to. Jesus warns against judging someone as your enemy, that he deserves to be hated and punished for hating, cursing, mistreating, striking, or robbing you. Context also shows that judgment and condemnation are the opposites of love, mercy, giving, and forgiveness. So when I read this uh, out of this Life Changers uh, Sunday School curriculum, when I read this understanding of what judging means in this context, it doesn't mean to, to discern right from wrong in yourself or others. No, the judgment is saying what this person deserves. If the person has mistreated others, uh, if, the, if the person has shown hate, if the person has been mistreating others, if the person has been robbing others or you, then we, our judgment is that they, that they should be our enemy. That's our judgment upon them. But to judge someone and to declare someone as our enemy is the opposite of love, mercy, giving, and forgiveness. So how can we love others? How can we offer them mercy? How can we offer, how can we give to them? How can we forgive them when we declare them as our enemies? And, and I think that when we take this into context of what God has done for us, which this is what Jesus refers to in this passage, that, um, that God has given, to, God has been compassionate to us. Be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate that if you act in this way, um, you're forgetting what God has done for us. That the Gospel of John, or sorry, the letter from John in, in um, John, 1 John chapter 3 reminds us that God first loved us. That even while, while we were sinners, while we were sinners, God loved us. And so the example of God's love is that even when we showed hatred toward God, even when we took from God, even when we mistreated God, even when we maybe cursed God, God still loved us. And that love of God is what we're supposed to example in our lives, an example through the kingdom of God. We cannot love someone when we declare them to be our enemy. We cannot love someone when we say that they're gonna get what they've got coming. The love of God is, is in complete contrast to that judgment. And so the encouragement, the gospel message in this for us today, is to open our hearts and minds to even those who have mistreated us. To open our hearts and minds to those who have done us wrong. So that 
we can love them in the same way that God has loved us. Keeping away from the judgment that they should be our enemies. And opening our hearts to them and saying, you deserve the love that God has shown me. The same love that God has given us. And the instruction from Jesus Christ is powerful. Unless we forgive others, then why should we expect forgiveness from God? I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging. Believe, believe me, it's challenging for me many, many days. But with the love of God that is shown to us, that abundant love from God, is our encouragement to love others. Let us go to God in prayer. God, you call us today not to judge, but to love others as you have loved us. And God, we live in that abundant love, the love that you have shown us through Jesus Christ. And God, help us to live this love every day of our lives and not to judge others as our enemies, but to love them with the love that you have shown us. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You all have a good week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.